So today I'm going to um, show you how to paint some interesting uh, little pictures or bookmarks, depending on how you uh, think about it. Um, I've divided this sheet up into four. You could make it five, um, or you could obviously expand these and make them bigger. So it's entirely up to you, but this is like four designs that I've turned into uh, bookmarks here. Um, just to show those of you who don't know anything about this um, particular way of presenting paper. This is called a watercolour block and it's called that because the paper is glued all the way around um, so that when you paint on it, it doesn't cockle because when you add water to watercolour paper, if it's not attached all the way around the outside edge, it will buckle and bend and um, basically be a bit unruly. Um, so this is a good way, a good system for uh, keeping your paper under control. When you're done painting, you can cut it off like I just did there, and then you're ready for the next sheet. Um, I'm just going to put that over there in front of me so I can see that, and I'll show you a new pad. This is Meaden watercolour paper. Um, this is 100% cotton, and it's uh, sized appropriately. That is to say it has sizing on it, not that that's the size, but sizing is the chemical that they put on the paper so that it behaves itself when you paint on it, so it behaves well, absorbs the right amount of moisture and so on and so forth. Um, anyway, so this is 100% cotton paper. The actual dimensions of this pad or block is approximately 10 by seven inches. Meaden um, are bringing out more sizes. They're going to bring out a larger and a smaller size they're also going to bring out soon the hot press and the rough. This is the first one, it's cold press, and that's obviously the one that uh, we use most often. Um, I do anyway. Some people use a lot of hot press paper, which is the smooth one. Some people, especially landscape painters, like to use the cold, the, um, the rough, which is obviously rough ish, rough ish. Uh, anyway, so these. Papers should be available soon on Meaden's site. And if you buy anything this month from Meaden, this is September 2023, <coughs> excuse me, you um, can be entered in a um, giveaway to receive some free paper at the end of September. So uh, there is that. So just go to their website. The link is in the description below, below this video. But I wanted to talk about that because I'm going to paint on this today. And I also wanted to show you that this is the first page in the pad, the block, and it is not to be painted on. It's green, as you can see, and that's just a protective sheet which is lightly adhered to the paper below, so you can just easily remove that and you're set to go. Now, next thing, um, this is my set of Kiritaki Gansai Tambi graphite colours, and they look horribly very similar to each other there. You can't really tell the difference between them. And the way I like to use them is very lightly. I don't like to use these heavily, and I'll show you how I do that in a minute. Um, so I'm going to uh, divide this paper up into um, bookmark-sized strips. Just going to use some narrow washi tape along the edge of my paper. Let's go around the outside first. And then what I normally just estimate, the four divisions, just do it by eye, but you can, obviously if you want to, you can do it using a ruler. So just divide Your sheet of paper to give you four bookmarks or little vertically oriented paintings just like that and then the next thing I'm going to do is um, if you can find yourself a an old candle this is just an ordinary household candle nothing special about it and uh, I'm going to use that to make a wax resist pattern on these 
uh, sections. So I'm just going to stop for a second and I'll be back to carry on when I've cleaned the candle. So before I start uh, painting, I'm just going to quickly talk about the brushes I'm going to be using today. This is a Craftamo uh, Diane Anton um, cat's tongue brush, it's three quarter inch, and this is going to be available from the end of October on uh, from Craftamo. So I'm just trying it out today to show you what it's like. I'll also be using this one, which is part of the same set, which is a size nine round, and this. Uh, these two together will be what we need to paint this picture today. So the cat has left my seat, so I can now sit down. Um, and so taking my crayon, we're going to do uh, four slightly different ideas here. Um, but each one of them, I'm going to do a background first of all. And with the crayon, I'm just going to um, put on the paper some more or less random lines using, you can't see it, can you? It's invisible. So parallel lines, loopy lines, whatever you feel like putting. On this one, I had something like that. And it um, doesn't really matter what you do, anything is good. And then we're going to take my brush and these paints give up their color really readily. You don't need to do too much in the way of pick up so you can see and as you go over the wax you get these interesting lines underneath and you can just pick whatever color you like um, you don't want to do it too dark uh, violet maybe at the end here this is one called violet this is more of a gray really and don't fiddle around with it too much just let it do its own thing and uh, then when that's dry we can paint on top um, this one here I did do a little bit darker. I did it with the, um, what they call yellow, which looks like green, and green, which looks like blue. But uh, you can pick whichever colours you like. You don't have to use the graphite colours for this, but people have been asking for a demonstration of using these these. Um, Kuretake graphites, so I thought I would just give it a give it a whirl, so to speak. Um, and then this one at the top here, I'm going to put. See how dark it can be. That's really too dark. I'll just dab some of that off. Keep that nice and light. And the brown is this one, so we'll put some brown here. Very easy to get too much colour on, so just use plenty of water. And what we're looking for is a sort of vintage kind of um, effect. And this one as well, I think I'm going to do with the pink. You don't have to do more than one colour, you can just leave the same colour all over. Put brown down the bottom again. Grey, mix it together, just nice and easy does it. Okay, so you might like some of those more than others, but uh, there we are. So I'll just um, put the hairdryer on those and then I'll be right back. So I think I'll start on this one here first of all, and I'm using my round brush now and I'm just going to pick up some Kuretake uh, graphite grey and we will paint in quite dark the uh, circles of these flowers here so just plenty use plenty of pigment and just put them there like that sort of just arrange them any old how any old how and then we need to clean our brush and I've got some other colors here this is um, an alizarin crimson so a dark red and I'm going to pick up some of that and I'm going to paint in using this uh, long haired brush to get a nice effect for the petals, just touching the center and then dragging out from the center, pressing down slightly and then pulling out
And really that's all you need to do to get quite a nice um, petal effect. And then we will come to the next one here, same thing. Go in and lift up. Doesn't matter if they overlap, in fact you really rather want them to. And because you've put down your masking tape there, it doesn't matter if it goes a little bit over the edge like that. And because this has got a long hair on it, this brush, you get those nice shapes. And then what we'll do is then we'll just clean our brush and go to, this is a sort of um, phthalo blue. Uh, I know that's not a traditional color for leaves and things like that. So we'll just add a little bit of the Kuretake greenish, just to give it a little bit of green about it. And we'll just draw down some stems like this. And what we've got there is a nice turquoisey kind of green color. And, and then we'll put in some, some nice, simple leaves, just pressing down and lifting up like that. You can put another one over here if you want. And then we could pick up some red and just put a couple of spatters down the bottom there. And we'll wait for that to dry. And if we feel that it needs it when it's dry, we can come back in maybe with some pen and do some line work. Um, but it might be that that one's absolutely fine the way it is. And now the second one is going to be some tulips. So I'm picking up with the same brush, some of the same color, the same red, and I'm just drawing simple cup-shaped uh, flowers here like this. You can see what I'm doing better than I could possibly describe it. Then I'm going to go for a little bit of the Kuretake green again, mixed with some, some of the phthalo blue, and we'll just put in stems again. We can let it just touch here let it bleed a little bit, give it a bit of encouragement. Same here. And you can do whatever color you want for the leaves and so on. You can make them greener than this, but I just kind of fancied doing them in a sort of turquoise color today. And what I'm going to do here, this one I definitely have the intention of coming in with some, some black, lining to give more detail there. So we will definitely do that. Um, this one, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do because I decided to do it differently from what I had done. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop in a very simple little green flower design using the brush to practice. And when you come to do this, you could start with this one because it's the simplest one. Just practice your shapes with the brush. You can always turn the paper around to get to the other side because you get a different shape depending on which way you come at it from. Or you can do them as, as crosses like that. You could, there's different ways of doing these things. But I quite like doing it like that, ideally. Okay, and for number four, slightly different again. I shall pick up the cat's tongue again, and I think we'll go for gray. And I'm just going to put in some nice, simple leaf shapes using the cat's tongue. As you can see, you can get quite a nice shape. Just putting it down and lifting it up. Mm. 
and we can draw stems coming down. Yeah, you can hear the cows. We put a little bit more in there, a little bit more dark. Okay, and then when that's dry, we'll do a little bit of embellishment on that. So we'll just uh, get the hair dryer again and get that nice and dry. Okay, so we'll start with this one here. And I'm going to basically use my Fudenosuke Tombow uh, brush pen just to outline the uh, shapes of these leaves. And I press hard and then press less hard to give a variation in tone, which actually gives something of a three-dimensionality to it. Um, and then we can put in some veins as well. How you embellish this, or even if, is entirely up to you, obviously. There's so many different things that you can do. Um, I'm going to do this at the moment and then I probably, I think it might be quite nice if I just put some gold in, some little dots and things like that. We could put some spirals in, uh, in uh, occasional places like that. And uh, you could put um, gold lines if we want. It's amazing actually how these little embellishments make a big difference to the overall effect. And when you're doing it, you think, oh, I don't know if that's going to work. But then sometimes when you're done, you think, oh, yes. And it doesn't always work, but it usually does. And you could also put some sort of miniature leaves in too, if you want just to sort of add to the whole thing. Sometimes when I'm doing this kind of thing, I uh, make a photocopy first and try it out and see whether or not I'm going to like what I'm doing before I do it. But I've run out of ink. <laughs> That's what happens when you use your colour photocopier too often and you find that the ink is the same price as the original copier was almost. So, yes. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to go to the tulips now and I'm going to put in some lines and we're going to keep this kind of semi-abstract and it's, it's a lot of fun to do and they don't have to look too realistic. We don't really care about realism, we just care about having, having fun and a pleasant outcome. And I quite like this dark pen and using it in a scritchy, scratchy kind of way. And I'm sorry if people don't like the sound of it. Uh, sometimes when you use pen, these ones are okay, really. It's the dip pens that are the worst. They go scritchy, scratch, sets your teeth on edge. Reminds you of, uh, you know, fingernails on the blackboard, that kind of thing. That's what we always say in England. I don't know. Don't know if people know what a blackboard is anymore. Young people, they probably don't. Whiteboard's not the same, is it? Uh, so I'm just making the bottom of the flowers a little bit darker there. And these ones, well, I suppose just to be, uh, what's the word? Um, what is the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, sis not systematic. Um, oh, I don't know. What is the word? We just put a little bit more black in the middle here yeah, to be, to be, or not to be. We can go around the petals a little bit, enhance their shape a bit. S to, not to be systematic, not to be conventional, to be consistent. That's the word, to be consistent. You should do the same thing on each one. So a little bit of pen work on each one. So you could give somebody all four of these as a set for a little gift. 
I'm not sure that I I think I quite like the one I did this morning a little bit more. And sometimes then if you think, oh, I don't know, I don't know if I really liked that, you could add a little bit of gold to the centers of the flowers to liven them up a little bit. Or you could say, oh, yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know if I like that even. I'll do it. I'll do it again. Um, these ones I'm going to do in this kind of this way. I think this pen is dying. Let's try another one. Doesn't matter. I think I'm going to be sending away for a few more pens. That's quite nice. We can say we meant it to be grey like that. Actually, I don't mind that at all. And we can give them some little stems. Like that. Okay, so that's that for now. And I'm just going to remove the tape. And the washi tape doesn't tear your paper. Also, if it's 100% cotton paper, it tends not to tear anyway. Um, sometimes, sometimes the cellulose paper is not so good. But this, this Meaden paper is pretty good on, on all counts, really. So there we are. You could put some spatter on some of the others as well if you wanted to. And I'm just going to remove this sheet and pop my knife inside there, cut around the outside edge of the paper. And there we are, we have our four bookmarks. And I was watching a video yesterday um, from Hannah Müller the people, the German people who make paper, and they have come out with a set, well, actually, pads of ready-made bookmark-shaped paper. And uh, they were touting this and saying, people don't always want to cut their own bookmarks, which is true, especially if you're a child. You know, you might not want to entrust a knife. And so you can just give them a, a pad of these Hana Mula bookmarks. I haven't got any yet. Maybe I'll try and get hold of some. I think it might be quite fun. I do like their paper. They're using the, now what's, what do they call it? Expressions type of paper. So. That's quite nice paper, I must admit, I have tried that. Okay, so one, two, that one needs a bit more of a trim on the outside. Edge. So there we are, that's the original that I did and I didn't reproduce that one, I did something slightly different. So we have this one and the tulips and that one and the daisies. So one, two, three, four. Very easy, very quick. They're very nice with the um, kind of random sort of uh, resist background there and the graphite colors they are absolutely fabulous for backgrounds they really are very good indeed so there we are i'll let you go and hope you enjoyed that and i'll see you again soon so bye now everyone bye now